I've been painting a lot of armour lately for the coastal nights, and when it came to the Lord and Perton's Griffhound, it gave me a chance to try something different, something I thought I wasn't able to pull off initially. Today, I'm going to share with you a different way to paint fur. People have a lot of opinions about Warhammer Plus, but to me, the painting masterclass videos really are worth watching, and without it, I probably wouldn't have thought about painting this way. Usually a model with fur has actual fur molded onto the model, but getting a smooth surface to look like fur, that's a challenge. The body is broken down into three areas, the top is Rhinox Hide, the middle is Mornfang Brown and the lower part is Scrag Brown. When dry, I try my hand at blending the three base coats together. To help with this blending, it seemed like the right time to dust off my wet palette. I've had it for a while now, but never really gave it a chance to be used properly. I can't say that wet blending is a weak or a strong point for me yet, because I simply haven't tried it enough, but after trying it now, I can definitely see myself using it more in the future. I started off blending Rhinox Hide and Mornfang Brown by adding both paints along either side of the divide line, and then started blending both together. I find the key to wet blending is to take your time because on the practice model I kept rushing the process and it actually took longer to get the blend right. But this time it took only 2 or 3 attempts to get the blend to look just right and after doing the same with the Mornfang brown and the scrag brown line I was set to start on the fur. At this point I was starting to feel unsure about how realistic the fur was going to turn out but I gotta keep going. The three base colours for the fur, again, were Mornfang Brown, Scrag Brown, and a mixture of Scrag Brown and Averland Sunset. I started with Mornfang Brown for the top part of the body, and the idea is to thinly apply thin lines that follow the curve of the body. It really took me a couple of times to get the right balance of amount of paint on the brush, how to apply it, and the consistency of the paint. At first I was going with quick strokes, and that worked out, but when I had more paint on the brush, the strokes were way too big and I had to wipe them off quickly. Scrag Brown was then used for the mid body fur, and an 80 20 mixture of Scrag Brown and Avalanche Sunset was used for the lower body. Then I went back and applied some of the brighter fur colours along the raised parts of the model, especially along his spine area. The last thing I did then was apply a very thin glaze of Mornfang Brown, just to slightly tone down the overall feel of the fur. After painting the head, the nails, and his base, the Griffhound was finished. And looking at them all finished up, I'm really happy that I tried this technique out. The real fur effect really does make the Griffhound stand out and adds a realistic feel to it. Trying it on a bigger model, like this Freegal General on a Griffin, would certainly be the next level of this challenge, but that's going to be part of a bigger project hopefully later on this year. With the Griffhound finished, all that leaves me with now is Indrasta, but more specifically, her wings. But that's going to be for the next video.